Will you be here tomorrow? <laughs> Hey everyone, um, happy Monday. Uh, Sarah right here, thanks for joining us on Chamber Connect Live. We are talking with a whole group of people. Y'all should feel loved. This is the most people we've ever had on one um, edition or episode of Chamber Connect. So welcome to all, all of you. How are y'all? Fine, thank you. How are you? Good. Good. So um, for our audience, just so you know, today we are talking with three people from our community that all have a variety of different roles and um, but all have one common purpose that they all kind of like fall, um, you know, that they have passion behind. And that is our partners in education program. So we are going to hear today from a few people. I'll introduce our guests um, at least up to the I can't ever do this right <laughs> to my right left. To the beside me, we have Lindsay Sargent. Um, Lindsay, you want to tell everybody who you are and kind of what you're representing a couple of different things today? Sure. So my name is Lindsay Sargent. I serve as the communications coordinator over at the Douglasville, Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority. Um, I've been over here for about 10 years. Um, however, I'm also the vice chair of Partners in Education. Um, it is a an organization that I'm really passionate about, that my organization is really passionate about, and that we have supported for um, at least 20 years. The The files that I have on it go back at least 20 years, so it could be longer than that, but I know um, we have had a long, um, long history with partners and organizations partners in education and it's it's a great organization and I'm so happy to be here to talk to you about it today. Perfect and then down below I guess right below me at least on my screen we have Emily Felton. Hey Emily how are you? Fine thank you fine thank you I am Emily Felton. I'm currently the principal at Arbor Station Elementary School Prior to this year, I was the principal at Sweetwater Elementary School, where I served as the assistant principal and also the principal there for three years. I love partner in education. If it wasn't for the partners in the community, wow, we would just not be lost, but our need, um, they really fulfill that, the gap and the need that we have here in the school system. So I really appreciate the partners. Been in awesome. education for 25 years. I'm sorry, I've been in education for 25 years, been in Dutch County for about 15 of those years. Well, and you win, no offense to the other two here. Um, <laughs> I am a bear cub from Arbor Station. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's a bear, always a bear. I know, I know. I think I was there, let's not date myself, but I was there when we picked that it was a bear cub. So oh, okay. I um, have much love for Arbor Station. Yes. All right. And last but not least, we have down there, down there, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Hey, I'm Andrew Jordan. I am a uh, partner in Conway Jordan and Associates. We are a local CPA firm here in Douglasville, Georgia. Um, I am a lifelong resident of Douglas County. So it is a, an honor and a privilege to be a part of Partners in Education. We're glad to get back. Um, we're we're partners with uh, CCI Douglas County CCI, and that's been a um, a fun partnership. That's for sure. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so I guess we can go around with a couple of questions and just see what happens. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Um, all right, Lindsay, I'm going to start with you. So I know you're vice chair for Partners in Education. Do you mind talking a little bit? I mean, you don't have to go super in detail, but about, I know you said Partners in Ed has been around at least 20 years, um, but just talk a little bit about what the organization does, kind of what your purpose is, um, you know, and just some of the, maybe some of the fun, interesting events that you guys have, some things that you have coming up, maybe the just a little kind of overview of partners in education. Yeah. So partners in education is a really cool um, group that really tries to connect our schools and our businesses together to form relationships and form partnerships. So that's kind of our core mission is to link up the business community with the school community. And we do that because, of course, schools are always looking for resource. And when we say resource, people automatically kind of jump to uh, money. They think like, oh, my gosh, am I going to be asked um, to give money, money, money when really, and I'm sure that um, Dr. Felton can talk about this when she gets on, you know, a lot of these schools need uh, 
people resources. They need people to come volunteer at their schools. They need mentors and career day speakers and internship opportunities. They need people from the community to support their schools and not just by writing a check. You know, they need them to be there in the schools, helping the kids learn, introducing them to new topics. You know, teachers, as much as they are amazing and rock stars, you know, they can't be, um, the subject matter expert on every single thing, but they can probably find a subject matter expert in our community and they can bring them in as a partner and help them, you know, get their students exposed to more opportunities, more um, things that they may not, you know, get that formal education on in high school or elementary school or middle school, you know. So that's what we're really trying to do is be that connector between the business community and the school system. Um, each year, other than COVID times, so of course we're in this weird, you know, holding period, but we do have, um, we get get togethers every year with all of our partner schools and our, all of our business partners so we can celebrate, you know, the things that we've got going on, um, celebrate some really cool partnerships throughout the year. We love to hear about um, the different ideas and the different ways people have partnered up through the years because there's some really cool ideas that um, people come up with really out of the box thinking to say, gosh, well, I do I do X and how can I bring X into a school and benefit the kids with it? Um, so there's just so much so much that you can do with it. And it's really, it's really never one size fits all. It's always, um, there's always so much opportunity to really fit the partnership with your business's skills or what you as a business owner or a business employee um, are good at and want to teach the community. Perfect. Well, and I think that's a very, very good point, um, Lindsay. You know, a lot of times I know when I've had businesses within the chamber that have been like, oh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a one man show. Like I operate out of my house. I can't give money to partners in education or I, I don't have the time. And then on the flip side, you have some people that are just so busy that they don't have the time to give to the schools, but they have the checkbooks. So it's kind of a win win either way. And even within large companies like water and sewer authority is a great example. You know, you have a completely different skill set than what your engineers have. Um, so it so you could be a partner in ed representing the water and sewer authority to some kids, maybe doing marketing things, but then your engineers could be helping the STEM program. So I think that it's it's a great um, it's a, it's a kind of a myth that I love to misband all the time that, you know, anybody can be a partner in ed. Yeah. So, so taking kind of taking the hat away from vice chair of partners in ed and putting on my water and sewer hat um, supporting the school system that way we've had some really amazing opportunities and like you said just depending on what the school is looking for so we have sent engineers out to talk to engineering classes because there are some particular like specific engineering classes that want a professional engineer to come in we've sent water lab analysts out to help stem programs and they're doing units on water testing um, we send out um, when uh, the schools were doing the Lego League, we sent out people that work in our collections and distributions and maintenance systems to help them kind of work with that project. So, I mean, there's so much opportunity to plug in your business and plug it in in a way that makes sense for the different parts of your business. Perfect. Perfect. Great. OK, I loved all of that. Now, let's talk with the school that sees the value in partners in education. All right, Emily, you're up. So um, tell us a little bit just about, you know, within the school, within your school, and, and I know that you're just moving to Arbor Station, but just some of the examples of the of the projects that things have helped with and just kind of, you know, maybe some needs. This is your lucky opportunity as the one delegated for the schools. Tell people what kind of needs that your school might need. Just kind of give us, you know, why, why it's important from a principal perspective. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. The old adage, um, it takes a village. Um, it <laughs> yeah. indeed takes a village. In that community, Partner and Ed is our village. Um, like was stated earlier, the volunteers, it's not always writing a check, which is nice, but the volunteers, the mentors, we have Real Men Read, where we are soliciting um, men in the community to come in and to read to our children. Of course, with the COVID, it's going to look different. We're not wanting to um, to discredit or take that away, we definitely just going to see that's going to look different and what that looks different that we're still working on that ways that we can bring the community in without bringing physically the community in our building, because of course we have to keep our children safe. Um, 
So it's going to look different. The one thing when I was at Sweetwater Central Baptist Church, who's a partner, um, we were selected, our school Sweetwater was selected for the day spring race. Um, because of the community, we were able to raise $11,500 for playground equipment for Sweetwater Elementary School. That took the community. Um, not only was did they sponsor and they wrote that check, but because it's such a huge endeavor to take on, they volunteered their time. So not only we were asking for that check, we were also asking for their time coming out, um, helping out with the, the food and other areas of the day spring um, race. Um, we have, which is huge here at Arbor Station, the Bear Run and the Road Runner Race. Those those different type of activities still going to go for, forward, but it's going to look different. And it does take the community to run those um, two huge endeavors that we have here at Arbor Station. Again, it takes a village and we strongly consider the community as our village. Perfect. Well, and I think, again, you brought up a great point of, you know, there are so many things. I was just sitting here um, while you were talking, thinking, you know, there are always needs within a school, whether it's back to school supplies, you know, think about COVID, like mm -hmm. hand sanitizer for the kids, yes. you know, these are things that a, a business could do in their physical space at their office. Mm -hmm. And then the benefits could be distributed through your school. So oh, I think, that, oh, yes, that, that makes thank so much you. sense. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. And that's exactly correct, especially at the times that we're in now, the hand sanitizer, the paper towel, because we are going to continue yeah. to wipe down our classrooms, our hallways, those um, those door handles. So those paper towels, and the sanitizer. Um, yes, we welcome those completely. Again, we're in this together, even the community, because we have their babies here at the schoolhouse. Yeah. So yes, anything that you can donate to that magnitude or even one bottle, that's fine. We will gladly accept it. Yeah, no, I, I have a seven-year-old. Sorry, he's at Beulah, but I have a seven-year-old. <laughs> and I just feel like I always send boxes of tissues because it's their little people. And, you know, they don't think, you know, sanitization and being clean isn't the first thing that my seven-year-old wakes up wanting to do. So, you know, even if, you, can be able, you know, if they have it within their hand, you know, their reach, then, then that might just make it a little easier. But those are just some small things. And I think that your example with the playground is amazing to see that it could be something small or something grand, mm -hmm. but it's always um, appreciated. And you know that the people from Central Baptist, which they're great friends of ours here at the chamber, you know, that that fits within the mission of their church and their organization. So it's just when it's just all the love, it's all the love. So perfect. Exactly. Yes. And thank you for bringing up the school supplies, because with the school supplies, since children can no longer share their supplies, when a yeah. student asks for a paper or a pencil that is given to them for them to keep. So that is definitely, definitely needed. So we can make sure that we are giving the supplies our students need to be successful in the schoolhouse. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. And I mean, and again, I, I mean, I just keep thinking, but even with technology, I know that you guys have a, the school system has a great partnership with Google, but just knowing that kids have access to technology, you know, that's, and I would say that's a, a very grand scale of a partner, Ned, but Google has been an amazing partner. I know that they have buses that they've connected with Wi-Fi where they go park in parking spots in different areas where the families might not necessarily have connectivity so that the kids can do virtual learning. So, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit literally on yeah. on what what the needs are and, and how people can help. So. Oh, yes, especially those who are in the construction business. If someone knows how we can get the clear partitions yeah. or, or creative idea on making sure that we are social distancing or a space between, um, definitely. I am open. Contact me if you would like to build those clear partitions. That would be wonderful. You are the envy of all <laughs> other schools. <laughs> I am here. Call me. I love it. Yeah, you got you got the gig. So I mean, you might as well read the benefits, right? Arbor Station yeah. Elementary, friends. Thank okay, you. thanks, Emily. Um, let's hear from Andrew. So we've heard kind of from the organization itself, and then we've heard from a school and how they find value and benefit. Let's now hear from a business because you know this is time and energy dollars out of your work day, right, Andrew, and your team. So talk to us a little bit about why you guys, um, you know, invest in 
you know, the partners and education program and maybe some of, you know, the, the wins and, you know, what you guys have gotten out of it. Sure. And, you know, uh, kind of piggybacking off what y'all are talking about when I've, I've only been a board member for a few years with CCI, but when I first went to the first partner in education breakfast, I, I heard a bunch of uh, people talking about it. And I just kind of assumed it was the, what y'all were talking about where it's really just about, you know, donating money. Uh, and, and that's what I thought it mostly was. But then when I started getting more involved with CCI, I started to see uh, where it is time. And as a CPA firm, we sell time. So it, it is a little bit of a sacrifice, but the amount that you get back from it is pretty phenomenal. We, um, we, we occasionally will donate money. It's never huge amounts of money, but uh, what, what I've found to be most rewarding is the, the interviews, the mock interviews that we do with CCI. Uh, we have had somebody come out for shadow day and I thought they would be bored in our office, but they ended up, I sent them around the whole office and we had 10 people uh, meet with the person. So uh, they either, they either decided they loved accounting or hated accounting that day, but we, we <laughs> spent some time doing that. Uh, and then the DECA events, those are, those are pretty interesting because those kids um, they're in, they're in a very uh, intense program that goes all the way to the state and national levels. And, you know, you want to, you want to go easy on the kids, but also uh, you have to, you have to be kind of judge them a little bit because they're going on to a little bit harder of a, a competition later. But mm -hmm. those are just a few things where we just, we don't really do anything financially. We just kind of help CCI or help the high schools, something along those lines. Um, but what I've always enjoyed about CCI is being a partner in education with them is investing in the trades. Um, it's, it's an industry that's growing and in very high demand. And uh, we're, we're trying to get involved with those students and have a positive impact because a lot of those are going to own their own HVAC businesses or own their own automotive businesses. Um, in fact, the automotive industry has this major shortage right now and they can't even, the kids can't get the certificates fast enough to meet the demand. So it's for us, it's a big, it's a big partnership to be a part of uh, to help those, those kids get in those programs. Yeah. And I think, I feel like everybody has really good points today. It's like we practiced this, but we didn't. Um, but I think that you had a great point as well, because while it's important for the businesses to connect with the school as a whole, it's equally as important to connect with those kids because, you know, to your point, people might decide they don't want to be an accountant, but you might find a second grader that is like, oh, Andrew is so great. Andrew is cool. Math is fun. Maybe I want to be an accountant, but it could be, you know, exposing them to opportunities. Same thing with Lindsay. Like, you know, somebody might think they want to be an engineer, but not think about working at the water and sewer authority. So I think that it does a great, um, it, the program does a great job at connecting, you know, you would directly with the students if that's, if that's what you want, because some people, again, are more the supply donations and, you know, logistics kind of things of helping. But I think that you're right. It's, it's definitely brings that personal side to it. And I've, I've also done the um, mock interviews before and those are, I mean, they're, they're great. And the kids are fantastic, but a lot of times just what you said, like they don't, they don't know and understand, you know, they get ingrained that they want to be, you know, a, an, okay, let's say a CPA, but they don't think beyond or, let's say like an analyst for sports, but they don't think doing math is doing math. It's just different. Do you get what I'm saying? And then there might mm -hmm. be other opportunities for them. Yeah. And those, those DECA interviews, some of those kids, uh, they look like they would be running a fortune 500 company in a few, few years. I mean, they come very, very prepared with, uh, with guns loaded. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I had one one year that was like, so I own three businesses and a nonprofit. And I'm like, wait, you're 17. <laughs> when did you have time to do that? So it's great. I remember telling Superintendent North, we did an event with Partners in Ed um, a couple years ago. And I remember telling him that I was so lame when I was in high school, like all of the things that these kids are doing because of the resources and the talent that they're exposed to through programs like Partners in Ed, you know, they have, they have these skill sets that you know, I was excited. I ran the balloon store and they're, they're like manufacturing T-shirts and hair products. And, you know, it's just I mean, you also are a product of the school system. So I'm sure, you know, makes you very proud of where, of you know, how things have adapted. But then at the same time, I'm like, 
was kind of a loser in high school. <laughs> I understand. Anyway, yeah, we're, we're definitely much cooler now, right? At least yeah. you and I, um, and maybe Lindsay and Emily. So cool. Um, all right. So um, let's just see if we can pull everybody back up. Sorry, my our Whitney, our behind the scenes person can move us around. So um, I just want, now we're all in different spots. Great. <laughs> um, so I just want to ask you guys like a quick question and um, we can let this kind of be our last thing. And then if you guys have final comments, we'll kind of wrap up. But um, if there is one, and I feel like we've kind of talked about this, but I want to kind of bring it home. But um, if you guys can each talk about like the one reason that people should people should um, engage with the Partners in Ed program um, and kind of your number one like one sentence of why you think it's so important. So um, Emily, we'll start with you and then we'll go Lindsay and Andrew. <laughs> Let's see that one word relationship is that one word why it's important um, just to plant that seed with the children. You're planting that seed of success, knowing that it takes the community, knowing that it takes a village to raise our children. So relationships. Love it. Love it. All right, Lindsay. Now you can't use hers. <laughs> I, I was really going to try and piggyback on it. But um, really, I think that the more resource and the more opportunities that we pour into our school system, the stronger it makes our community as a whole. Um, you know, the stronger our graduates are going to be, the stronger, you know, it's going to be a stronger job pool for businesses once those kids start to graduate and go off to college and look for work. Um, so it's really beneficial for our whole community. It's not just serving the school system and it's not just serving the businesses. It is strengthening Douglas County as a whole. And I think that's something that everybody can get behind. Love it. Love it. All right, Andrew. Uh, I just I think it's good. It's good to get involved with the students and have a positive impact and kind of help shape their future careers uh, in terms of what it costs. It's for us. It's a minuscule financial obligation. It's uh, and when when, you know, Gary or Julia never would come up to me and would need uh, something, whether it be, you know, the teacher's lunch or something, it, it just you, you feel so bad you want to <laughs> you want to help out so it's uh, it's definitely not something that costs a lot and it's it's a great way that you can kind of help um, kind of help shape a, a student's life and a student's career absolutely and Andrew I think your daughter is still too young to be she's not in school like elementary school right she starts preschool this year. OK, so I can speak on behalf of all of the parents of the thirty six thousand children that are, that are in our school system and say that if I did not have respect for teachers and educators before the pandemic, <laughs> my God, do I know? Because it's I, I just don't know. I mean, I remember just trying to manage, you know, being at home and working from home and doing chamber stuff and then helping Avery with his digital learning. And I know that I can't imagine doing that with like 18 other little friends around and, you know, everything else going on. So, so I just think that if there is a more, op, there is not a more opportune time for businesses to engage with the partners in ed program. And if you have children, then you definitely have absolutely no excuse because it's, what to Andrew's point and Lindsay's like they do an amazing job in our school system educators board of ed you know all of them and and I think that you know no matter how big or little your your engagement is with whatever school you decide then I think that you know whether it's a box of tissues or you know wi-fi for everyone I think that it's the least that we can do right now um you know to help out everybody so um that's my little soapbox because <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank I, you. I asked him if he wanted to go back to school and he's like mom send me back I just, I can't <laughs> <laughs> so, oh I know yeah so um, all right Lindsay so I'm gonna let you wrap it up um I know that we're still all in a virtual world um is regarding events and stuff like that but how can people get engaged how can businesses get involved. Um, I'm talking with the schools later this week about kind of getting all of that, even, you know, going even more, but tell everybody how they can get connected with and it's and, and kind of the process, the cost and all of that. 
So like we've really been uh, touting, you know, there's no actual cost to be partners in ed. Um, you can sign up for your business for absolutely no cost. Um, we are, if you've been sitting here listening and you're like getting really pumped about it and you want to sign up or you've been a partners in ed in the past and you want to re-sign up, uh, we are starting that process for the 2020-21 school year. So um, if you're interested in, do, in doing that, if you've if you've been struck by the bug to sign up to be a Partners in Ed right now, after you've listened to us prattle on for 30 minutes, um, you contact the chamber, they can get you hooked up with um, the application. Very simple. Um, we'll have a, a kickoff. It may be virtual, it may be in person, we just kind of have to see, but that'll happen at the beginning of September. So you'll get some more information on how to structure a partnership, um, who your contacts are gonna be at the school, some ideas that you have. Um, so we make it really easy to start and get your partnership going with your schools. Um, and we can really help guide you if you're nervous. So don't be nervous, but if you are, we got plenty of resources to help you out. <laughs> Great. And I think Emily made a great point, too, of that. Even if you are, you know, not comfortable, obviously, it's going to be different with going into the schools. But even if you aren't comfortable, you know, interacting face to face, there's still plenty of opportunities that exist. So um, love it. Um, we'll make sure in the bottom of the chat to put the link to the information about engaging with partners in ed and hopefully have everybody back here in maybe a couple months so we can talk about all the amazing partnerships that came out of this very conversation. <laughs> so, um, well, I appreciate you guys being on today. It's fun to see your faces um, and look forward to many great things to come from Partners in Ed. So, yes, yeah, so am I. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Great. Thank okay. you, guys. Thank you. Have a good well, day. Everybody have a great week. Um, and we will be here next Monday. Um, and it's a surprise who our guest is because I don't remember. So <laughs> <laughs> and um, we will talk to everybody next Monday at three for our next Chamber Connect. So. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.